life she came, she ran through Samaria. And this they heard her say, He gave me water, water from the well, and I will never thirst again. He saved my soul from hell. Rivers of mercy falls from his throne of grace. I must go and tell about the water at the well. I was sinking down in a barren desert. drafted into service uh, because of sickness and one thing or another we've had uh, to change the schedule uh, in fact had to get different ones to fill in uh, again I want to say any audience that would like to sing you're welcome to as long as you'll be faithful to the house of God I don't mean once a year I don't mean Christmas and New Year's or Easter but I mean faithful to the Lord and willing to dress right, sing right, sing the right songs. Uh, thank the Lord. We want you to. Uh, the Lord said make a joyful noise. And uh, so you can't use an excuse, I can't sing. The excuse is are you willing to do what God wants you to do? You know, God will bless his word. And it's not the workers. And I'm thankful for that. It's good tonight to have these missionaries with us. Uh, I believe we were just talked a little while ago, somewhere about, was it 82 we said, or somewhere through there, that they came, been back different times through the years, but then our missionaries for a long while. And I thank the Lord for uh, the McKinney's and uh, how God has used them, not in uh, easy places, but working with the Indian people on the reservations. Now, please stay awake tonight. If you don't, he has got a bow and arrow. He's a good shot, and uh, he'll get you. 
Uh, no, I'm kidding you. Brother Larry, you come. We love you, buddy. Appreciate that. We thank you. We thank this church. Probably you don't understand all a part of it, but uh, when you just supported a missionary for since 1982, you know, a lot of things have happened in the ministry with the Indian people over all those years. We started in uh, Basically, when I was in Bible college, I pastored a church in Dallas, Texas. And uh, till I got out of college, and we went on to Oklahoma, and, and we were really support after that. And they went on to Oklahoma and organized a, the Naomi Baptist Church with the Choctaw people. That's what we are. And, and uh, that church started another church about 90 miles west of there in Bennington, Oklahoma, and that church is still there. We visited the pastor the other day. And then we went in 1988 on up to Tacoma, Washington and started the Tacoma Indian Baptist Church. And uh, in that place of Tacoma, there was a reservation right there in the city, the Puyallup Indian Reservation. I, got, I get tickled at them because back years ago when we first went there, those Indians didn't want to be called Indians. They wanted to be called the Reserve or the uh, First Nations. And that, they, they just didn't enjoy that name Indians. Well, now they're rich. Gaming opened up for them and they're right there on I-5 and they're so rich. They don't, call it, they don't mind if you call them Indians. Matter of fact, big old sign on their gaming place that says, Puyallup Indians. Boy, money sure can change people. <laughs> but we got to serve there for about 20 years because we started mission work in Seattle and White Center area in Seattle and then one in Bremerton and, uh, and then we sent out a guy that surrendered to preach to Paulsbo, Washington with the Suquamish Indian tribe and, and we met, had meetings all across uh, the waters on the on the coast up there with uh, from Nia Bay. You know where Nia Bay is, anybody? That's the point of the United States. I mean that that point on the northwest, at the edge, right before you get to the ocean. On, it's dark there. We tried to start a church there. And we had meetings along the coast with Quileute and Quinault and and Squaxin. I think it's called Squaxin. Who? Macaw, that was it. I, I used to say, Macaw, Macaw. <laughs> they didn't like that either. So, <laughs> But uh, we, we, had, uh, we had ministry with the Muckleshoot Indian, the uh, uh, Nisqually Indians, and uh, you just, we just stayed there for 20 years, doing a lot of work, a lot of work, and then Later on, we decided it's time to leave, and I had trained a young man that, that surrendered to preach in Tacoma. He was a, actually a gang member, and he came out of California and had married an Indian girl, a Nooksack Indian girl, and started coming to church. Well, uh, one day we was driving down the road, he said, Pastor, it's hot. I said, it's going to be hotter where are you going. You, you need to get saved, and he, he got saved. And uh, after that, he began to uh, tell me that God was calling him to preach, so we started training him. I didn't want to send him off to Bible college because they never come back. And so I decided to train him myself, and, and uh, he's still there today. I don't know, he's been there 12, 15 years now, I guess. And, and the Lord's really blessing him and the church there. And so we went to Portland. I had no other way to go. I had, I had this real big plan when we went to Washington years ago. I was going to go to Washington. I was going to move down to Sacramento, and I was going to keep going south, you know, and end up in Denver, and I was going to come back to Oklahoma and, and happily live ever after, you know. But it didn't work out that way. That was my plans. And But uh, I had this... Uh, God, God began to open my heart towards the Indian people in the Puyallup, I mean, uh, 
Portland area, working with the urban Indians. And so we went there and started the Glendivere Baptist Church, and, and we stayed there eight years, and then we turned it over to another fella and went on to the reservation, which was uh, about an hour and a half from there, from Portland, out in the desert land. And we went there, and that's where we're at today, but four years now, and, and the Lord has opened a lot of doors. You know, I get to go in and talk to the tribal council and pray with them, and there's three tribes there in that reservation. It's called the Warren Springs Tribe and the Wasco Tribe and the Pua, uh, I keep saying Puala, but uh, Paiute Tribe. And so they're confederated tribes, so they, we work with those. And they got three chiefs, and they don't all like each other, so that, that helps us out a whole lot. And, and so, but, but the church is doing well. And the Lord, Lord has blessed us. And, uh, but right before we left, well, Regina's sister passed away here. We was going to drive down together, but she had to fly down early, and then I stayed. I had to drive back, drive down by myself, but uh, uh, I had to stay there and baptize a couple young men, 22-year-old and 23-year-old. Uh, young, fresh, good men. They're, they're uh, clear-minded and warm-hearted, and they have... Uh, you know, they've been young men who've been kicked out of the homes and didn't have no place to go. And we have a cowboy in our church that, well, he's an Indian cowboy. I always tell people, Indian cowboy, I don't know how that works. He must be fighting inside all the time. <laughs> Indian cowboy. And so, but anyway, <laughs> he, took the, he takes them kind of guys home with him and teaches them the ropes of cowboying and breaking horses and taking care of cattle and building fences and all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, he's done good with them. And so they're the two guys that got saved. And I hope that uh, uh, the Lord continues to lead them in that direction of, of uh, finding some good wives and maybe God will call them to preach. And that's what we hope to, to see done there. Uh, that would be a good thing if they did. We need somebody good to take over that work, somebody that belongs to the reservation. I don't belong there. They tell me that. And so it's been a hard go for us because that reservation is uh, re very, uh, they just close off to every, everyone else. And, and so when I got there, they, I was walking by the bus stop one day and somebody says, Hey, I don't like you. And then I stopped and I said, well, why don't you like me? And I turned around. I shouldn't have done that, but I did. I turned around and stood there and listened to him. And he's ready to fight me and said he's going to beat me up. And I need to go back to Oklahoma. And you're not one of us. You need to go home. And this is our land. This is our, this is our mountain. This is our rivers. This is ours, ours, ours. And... I said, well, well, wait, 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 wait. The earth is the Lord's Amen. and the fullness thereof. I said, see that tree up there? That's his. That river down there is his. I just went down. Well, everything he covered, I covered too. It all belongs to God. He put us here to be good stewards of it. And I said, and look at it. Y'all hadn't done that at all. Filthy, dirty. Y'all done a bad job of it. Boy, I mean, then I was going to get it. You know how you smart off sometime and then you say, Lord, help me, please? <laughs> I did that. I kind of looked around to see which way it was going to run. And I thought, if I just outrun them, I'll be okay. I said, Lord, deliver me. Help me. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. And I knew he was ready to get me. But then the bus pulled up. And the big guy that goes, goes to our church, he's a boxer. Heavyweight boxer, big guy, came up behind me and said, Pastor, how you doing, man? Put his arm around me and he said, let's go for a walk. Uh, like the Lord already whispered in his ear what was going on. And, and boy, I got happy. He, he walked me away from trouble again. So, But since that time, we've had a lot of trouble with people. They, they don't like, hear, like to hear the gospel. And, and a uh, matter of fact, one day a guy walks up to me and I, uh, he says, this is just ex actually what he said to me. Oh, he said, I like you. And he said, do you still tangle? No, 
I almost said no, but I got in the flesh. <laughs> and I just, I kind of just moved towards him. I said, I sure do. <laughs> How old are you? I said, I'm 65. He said, well, you're just two years younger than me. And, I, and somebody already told me he was a, in his, back in his days, he was a boxer and everything. And, I, and so I, I, was, I had moved forward too, too quick. But I didn't know what I was going to do, and I just looked at him and just stared at him, and he backed up, and, and he walked off. And uh, I said, Lord, I won't do that no more. <laughs> but uh, I've had incidents like that since I've been there. And, uh, the hatred of Christ, the hatred of the gospel, the hatred of the Bible, and the hatred of Christians, hatred of churches, and uh, it's, that's, that's a hard place to be. My wife can tell you we've uh, struggled with a lot of things with the people. And, and, but we're get, finally getting settled down and everything's starting to come around. And we got people come by our house for prayer. People, I'll be outside and people will be walking by and just come to our yard and say, pray for me. Amen. Pray for me. And, uh, and, you know, God's opened doors for us really has and so uh, that's why you're on this end praying across the country for Warren Springs Reservation and it keeps our work going and it keeps our faith strong and so you pray for us because there are, there are still a lot of challenges up there and a lot of things that we still need to do and a lot of work that needs to be done uh, we started a new church or new work up there Spokane Reservation, about an hour from Spokane City, and uh, COVID hit, and so we had to close it down. But hopefully, we'll get back get back to opening that up soon. And we're looking at other reservations. I went through one the other day called Prime, I mean, a Burns, Oregon, and there's nothing there. A lot of natives there, nobody. There's nine reservations in Oregon, and only one reservation, the Warm Springs Reservation, is being covered with a gospel preaching church. Listen, and, and we can't do it, not at our age now. <laughs> We've been up in Northwest most of our life. We went up there in 88 and still there. Went to Washington, started there. And there are 28 reservations up there. And we were the first ones there in 88. And so, uh, way behind. And losing ground, more ground. Churches are, I mean, the reservations are going backward. Even our tribe in Choctaw country down here in Oklahoma. We've always been called a designated land. We would, our tribe has been, the, the place where we live has been called Choctaw Nation. Now it's called reservation. They decided to claim their sovereignty and become a reservation going backwards because everything comes back to them and for a long time our tribe has claimed Christianity and they're going to try to maintain that but I don't know how long it's going to hold up but uh, you don't see too much uh, hope in all of that unless the churches that are there uh, hold their ground and so y'all pray for Oregon I pray that God will continue using and using us there and uh, we might be good for another church plant or two. Uh, we, we're getting old just like preacher. <laughs> I'm not that old yet, but uh, I'm kid I'll catch up to him one day. Uh, so I think he might he might beat me, you know. He, I might be gone before him. But uh, I want to thank the Lord for these two. They have been a blessing over the years, and uh, uh, such good friends. They've always, oh, except they hold one thing against me. I destroyed their cat. Amen. And boy, they never forgave me for that one. And so anyway, but I got two cats at home. I'll bring one down next time I'll come. You can have them. I'll re replace them for you. But uh, I thank God for pastor friends and their wives and their families. We met some of the grandkids today and 
They're just like them. Amen. Open and friendly and, and loves the Lord. That's that's important. I want to introduce my wife. We said we're going to be celebrating 48 years this year. Amen. And all we've ever done was ministry all our years. And and it's uh, been rich and rewarding. And, and uh, you know, it, it's the blessing of God upon your life. I, I really thank the Lord for my wife for staying with me through all those thick and thin times of i tell people all the time you know what i did the preaching and she did the chasing she's chasing little kids around uh, she always taught kids you know i'm talking about she's the only teacher when we start a church so she's little kids and they're all like this and all the way up to 12 years old or 13 14 years old she's teaching them all in one class in one bunch I wouldn't even take that challenge, but she's been willing to do that, and, and over the years we've seen those kids get saved, and uh, there's so many of those kids in that church there in Tacoma that got saved and been married and got kids, and we still see them, and, and uh, she was the instrument reaching those kids leading them to Jesus Amen. and how they've grown up in church and raising their kids in church and that's that's the important thing you never forget that so we just thank you for helping to keep us on the field and sometimes we might get mad at you for keeping us on the field <laughs> but appreciate all that you've done thank the Lord for it are there any questions about the Northwest you want to ask or Anybody ever been to Oregon? Washington? Boy, you Ohio and stay home, don't you? Yeah. I was at, I was at uh, Eaton this morning. I mean, not eating, but Eaton. <laughs> and I asked him the same question, and nobody's ever been up that way. So y'all just don't go out of state, I guess. <laughs> but uh, uh, we live in the desert. I mean, we really live, truly live in the desert. What? 40 miles, 45 miles south of Mount Hood. You look on the mountain, find Mount Hood. Beautiful, beautiful mountain. And we live straight south from our east, southeast, and in, uh, in, uh, all desert. And so we enjoy that dry weather, sunny weather. That's why it's called warm springs. Except in the wintertime, it snows. <laughs> but we enjoy that. All right, tonight, if you would, take your Bible, and I want to just kind of uh, rehearse and, and to uh, bring some thought back to you, to, to realize the importance of, and, and I don't have to tell you this, but the importance of what missions is. And if you turn to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, 19, and 20, I want us, I want us to see just some words I want us to pick up on that. In verse 18 it says, Jesus came and spake. Jesus came and spake. I, I like that word. Here's Jesus speaking. Here's the voice of the Savior. Voice from heaven. He's the voice of the Son of God. And he speaks. And what he says is, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Even unto the end of the world of the world and I want you to understand one little thing in verse 18 when he says all power is given is given you know this is the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ not just his voice but his heart this is the Lord speaking to you and to me he's speaking to the church I was amazed to see. I was looking up the, on the web, uh, uh, on the internet about the church, and I saw all these churches y'all support. 
And I looked at that and I said, uh, boy, they got everything just right. I mean, I've been to a lot of churches where they're going backwards too. <laughs> They're starting to eliminate missions. They're taking missionaries off the field. They're taking their support so they can buy better things for their church. And their, their priority is not, is not right anymore. They've, they've got mispriorities. They're setting up other things in the program and they're missing the mark. But Jesus said all, 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 I mean, uh, 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 uh what, are, what, where am I? <laughs> all power is given unto me all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth all of it this is who's speaking to you and I want you to understand something about missions how it really stands out as a mandate to us it's not an option it's a mandate it's not a choice we have it's a mandate we're to obey mandates and follow it. So we go into to make disciples. We teach them to observe all the baptizing them and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And you know, I, I see that in this church already. I can tell that you do such things. We have seen the Lord work through our mission work over the years, and it wasn't just by chance. It wasn't just because we got lucky. It wasn't just because we were on a good side. No, it happened because you prayed for missionaries. And boy, every time that a church was started and people got saved, you were part of that. You got to understand how much of that you was a part of it. We've been blessed. Miss McKinney and I have served in all these years, and we'd do it again if we got another chance. But the Lord has blessed the ministry among the Indian people. Amen. We have worked and labored, not just where we are, but we labored with other, other missionaries when we could. We started the uh, Native American Baptist Fellowship and brought uh, missionaries that work with natives together, which three, anyway. <laughs> but we got them together and we had meetings and we bring our church together we had revival meetings we saw salvation through that we saw people surrender lives through that we saw a lot of things of healing through that where people heal their, their hearts and heal their marriages and heal their families and God has been good to us and you want to see that when you work with Native American Indians I'll tell you what, we belong to a tribe right now that really, really, really needs to be healed. They really do. We've got so much problem. I, I, I had a little DVD, but it missed up this morning. I, don't wanna, I didn't want to bring it, but uh, as soon as I get one perfected, I'll send one to the pastor, maybe one Sunday night. He doesn't have a sermon. He can just show it to you. <laughs> but it'll show you a lot of things there. Our people over there are just so stooped in sin. They're all, I mean, we got myth problems everywhere. Well, we live, we're the first house as you go turn up on our section of the community that we live in, and their houses close, and houses close, and houses close, and houses close, and it just goes on and on and on. Probably, probably uh, more closed and open. All of in that area where we live because of meth. Because of meth. As a little boy, and, uh, I heard some noise one day when I was at the church building, and I went and looked in the back window, and I looked. I walked over there, and I looked out the window, and there's some boys. Matter of fact, there's about five of them, but there was three of them standing there. One was about 11 years old, one was about nine, the other one was seven. Here they were doing math. So I got my camera and I took a picture of them. And then I went around and got on to them and I said, let's go tell your parents. Now I went over there and told their parents, and you know what? I got in trouble. The parents got mad at me because I snitched on them. But that's what the whole problem is. They have no parental authority, no parental guidance. They have no parents that love them. 
You say, preacher, you don't have a right to say that. I'm going to tell you, if that's the truth. Would you love your kids? You wouldn't allow that to happen. And I tell you, it's the saddest thing that you see. And so when we have kids in our church, I love those kids. I want them to go, those kids to know that that preacher loves them. Somebody loves them. Somebody and embraces them and, and hugs them. And boy, they come to church now. They'll come through that door and run, they'll run down the aisle and now I'll come over there and grab you and hug you because that's what they want. They need somebody to love them. They're little kids. And they're lost. They're lost. Lost a lot of ways. And the parents have don't have any connection with their kids. I remember one time when we were in Tacoma, we had a church from Connorsville come up, come down and help us with vacation Bible school. And I remember one of the girls came and, and was one of the teachers and one of the, one of the kids told her and said, uh, she said something about their parents and she, one of the kids said, my, my dad just went to prison. My mom's in prison. My dad's in jail. Another one said, my dad just committed suicide this morning. And it just went on and she cried and cried and cried. She couldn't believe how bad it was. That's what we hear all the time. We, are, we live with them like that. Your, your heart stay broken all the time. That, that you, you, you're just like Jeremiah says, my eyes affected my heart. Amen. You weep over these people because you know that they don't have any ray of hope in their life. Right. That's why they need to hear about Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'll tell you what, we, we've seen that over and over and over and over. That's all we ever see on the reservation. And so you say, I'm praying tonight that somebody here would get a burden to go to the reservation, to work with some kids, to work with them teenagers, to work with some preteens, because that's where, that's where they really, really need to be reached. Because we work on the adults. We just don't have anybody to work with the younger ones. You have to have, you have to have courage. You have to have some strengthening of God's spirit in your life to work in, in surroundings like that all the time. I've, I know missionaries who work around that and it makes them hardened in their heart. They get so, so tough and so hard that they, it's just a, a work, it's just a job to them, but I can't get used to it. You know, that's the truth with even this area. You can do the same thing here. It can come to the place where God can't work with your heart anymore. You can come to the place where your heart is hardened and you start getting indifferent. And after a while, you go through a routine, and you're so used to doing it, you keep doing it. But you see, you can see, you can see and understand when people, God has bro broken their heart, and God has given them burden, that they, they constantly are on the move to see some changes, and changes are always good. We look at our country today, and you see changes of everything. I mean, some of you, way back then, you, you used to ride a, a wagon to town. <laughs> now you ride a Ford. <laughs> Not too much better, but... <laughs> but now there are changes. I was talking this morning and telling them we were so poor when we were kids. And, and I remember my, remember my mom used to uh, sweep the dirt floor. And they looked at me like, huh? Especially the younger teenagers, they looked at me like, dirt floors? And I said, yeah, she kept a clean dirt floor. And even after she swept and cleaned it, I rolled around it and she said, get up, you're going to get dirty. I said, no, mom, you just cleaned it. 
But you say, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about is we get used to things like that. But now we live in houses with clean floors, carpet. And we, got, we don't have dirt floors anymore. <laughs> changes. We have seen a lot of changes in our country. Uh, I remember one day, one uh, uh, my sister, you had that. She still had that rotary doll, or yeah, on the wall. I said, I have a twin sister, and uh, she has a rotary dial phone on her wall. And and when somebody calls her, they're about ring. And uh, it's neat. <laughs> you know, she want to go call people all day long, you know, and and go backward. But then you got you carry your little phone. A lot of changes been made, technology. A lot of changes. But those, all those changes aren't changing people's lives. People are getting worse. They've gone from bad to worse. No wonder the Bible says there's none good. There's none righteous. There's none that understandeth. You see, people aren't getting better. They're getting worse, worse, worse. Sin is on the rise. And you and I need to, to, to stop somewhere in our tracks and take a good look at it. Most of us are, are seeing the changes as our country might be making in education and in technology and, 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 and as far as uh, uh, work conditions and all and all. And we might like those things, but we need to stop and look to condition of man. The condition of even your friends, your neighbors, the condition of those people in your city. Because that's where we really need to get busy and work. Share the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel that, that changes people. I'm the old school person. I still believe in the transforming power of Christ. I still believe when a person truly repents of their sin and comes to Jesus in faith, that Jesus will transform their life. He'll change their heart and he'll, he'll give them a home in heaven. Amen. I believe that. I'll stay with it. We need to put more of that in our messages and more of that in our life and start living that gospel. Because that's where the Holy Spirit still works. And He'll always work. He guarantee, guarantees that. There's nothing like the gospel. It, it's, it doesn't get old. It's just as powerful as it was when Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is a power of God unto salvation. Just as powerful as, as he, when he said that. And when he preached that. And you look in the New Testament and you see it after one after another, what the gospel did to people. Our Indian people are drowning because they're worshiping spirits of different sorts. Spirits of diverse, different kind. They're spirits that are, they don't even understand it. Spirits that have no boundaries or limitations. Spirits, what the Bible calls defiled spirit. Or a evil spirit, unclean spirit. And yet, John teaches us in 1 John, the idea for us is that you and I have this anointing and you and I have the Spirit of God. Amen. And just the very fact that the Bible calls Him Holy Spirit should tell us something. Right. He means good for us. He means righteousness for us. He means holiness for us. He's a, he's a Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we need to understand that there is a deep connection there. That you and I need to rely on the Spirit of God and take the message that He gave us to preach to the world. Right. Wherever 
and distances is no problem. You can you can you can preach to them from here on the screen and see it all the way across to the to the desert land of Oregon, and they'll hear the gospel of Christ. See, the gospel has no hold in one place. It's ready to go. That's why Paul said, pray to God that, that, that our gospel might have free course. Our preaching might have free course. Pray for us. Because he knew wherever he took that gospel. And he did. If you look at Acts chapter 14 sometime, and you begin to see that what took place in his life. And he, he was there in Iconian. He was there in Lystra, Derba, and, 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 and uh, Lycoia. And he was in those places preaching the gospel. He's threatened in his life. And he leaves one place and runs to another. But that doesn't mean he was scared. He just went to preach the gospel in another place. And when he did, God did some things because it was the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. The gospel. And so tonight, what well, we need to understand that we do have a mandate from heaven to take the gospel. And that mandate is something that you would say, well, missionaries preach that all the time. But you see, what the problem is, is that we preach it because in our heart as missionaries, what we see coming out of that passage is always one word. It's called urgency. Amen. Urgency. There's a young man, my wife and I, and we took them out. We, they, or they took us out to eat Wednesday night. We went with them to a, a fancy restaurant called Whataburger. Amen. <laughs> they're talking about missions, and they're not married yet. They're going to get married in June. And they're talking about get, going into the ranks of missions and, and learn how to start churches and all that. And, and, I, and, and after we, all, we got to a certain point, I said, well, you know what it is? You need to go now. You know, that's an important word right now. Our country needs the message now. You know, the devil is a prince in power of the air. The devil's working all. The devil knows he's got just but a short time. He knows that. And we're dying at all ends as a church. I mean, you may not be in this part of the country, but in other parts of the country, you see it. And in the book of Revelation, it was said to one of the churches that you're to go and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. And we need to do that. Whatever your program is dying, you need to get busy. Build it back up to life. We need to get busy. Amen. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're just sitting back awaiting him to come back. And he's coming back. The trump will sound. And when that trump sounds, the Bible says, and, and in the voice of Archangel, the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. We're just waiting for that. So it wouldn't hurt us to now get busy. Get busy. Get busy. And stay busy. Because we don't have much time, folks. And the, the other part of that, standing on this side and saying, we don't have much time. You got to understand, they don't have much time. We need to make it a plea. A plea. A plea. I remember one year... My, one of my old brother, oldest brothers, he's a twin too. We well, got two sets of twins in the family. I got uh, Gary and Jerry, and then me and Larry and Carrie, and then and then there's Pam. And I always told her, I said, "You better be glad you weren't a twin, Pam." There's been Larry, 
I mean, uh, Gary, Jerry, Larry, Carrie, and then your sister's name would have been Mary, and you would have been scary. <laughs> and then uh, I don't get no raisin pies anymore because I said that. <laughs> but she makes the best raisin pies, and I love raisin pies, and she hadn't made me any in a long time. But anyway, where was I going? I can't remember where I was going. It's getting sidetracked here. Somebody help me here. Now! <laughs> now it's time to stop. <laughs> I just want to thank y'all. Let you know how much we appreciate your church. I want to thank you because you've prayed for us. And you've kept, like I said, kept us on the field all these years. I, I've got an email here not too long ago from a missionary who had to go home because he lost a lot of support during COVID. And I thank God because God kept us there. Amen. And our support kept coming in and still there. Amen. And we thank God for churches like that and like yours faithful all the time but most of all we're thankful for your prayers Amen. there's a lot of times when i don't know what what takes place a lot of times i think to myself i wonder what god's trying to teach us now but he always shows up they're they are vehicle we was driving down the road and uh or our our my uh windshield wiper quit working and we was in texas and uh, I thought, oh no, it's going to start raining. What am I going to do? So I made an appointment the next day to have it checked out. And, and uh, we got to the mechanic's garage. We was about a block away. And I just happened to reach over there and just turned it. And that thing came on. And one guy, I texted him and said, hey, my wiper came on. And he said, you got a short. <laughs> and I said, no, somebody prayed for us. Amen. I, I like to believe that. Amen. And still been working. Went through a lot of rain coming up here, and it's still going. Amen. You know, that's the best kind of prayers being answered. And that's why we pray. It's those little things. Those things that you don't, you don't think matter to, to, to much at all, but it does for us. A lot of little things like that. We had a, a heater pump go out at our house not too long ago. And that thing cost almost $9,000. And we didn't have the funds to do it, but was it just that same week when First Nations, uh, somebody sent me a check and she, she read that letter and they run an organization, a network. They help us out a lot with feeding or clothing or uh, furn bringing furniture in to help the Indian people. But she read that prayer letter and they sent us $5,000, and I said, somebody was praying. Does that mean it's time to quit when it falls over? <laughs> but your prayers matter. Amen. It matters a lot. Amen. Father in heaven, we're grateful. We want to thank you, Lord, for God's people. We want to thank you for God's church. We thank you, Lord, for their help, their support over the years we've been on the field. And Lord, they've had a part in a lot of missions, mission work across the world. And sometimes, sometimes uh, it makes a lot of difference, even though we're still here in the United States, yet it seems so far away. And Lord, we, we're grateful, Lord, that you have a people like this helping. 
But Lord, more than that, I pray that while we're supporting missionaries and helping missionaries and praying for them, I pray that the people would see the urgency of reaching this community, this area, sharing the gospel, reaching people, seeing the church grow, seeing souls saved, seeing people called out to be missionaries and pastors, seeing this work go on and on in days when everybody, everybody uses that COVID for reason or excuse of not doing much anymore. And yet there's a people in faith, people who are still strong in their heart. Lord, help them to get out and be stronger than ever. Help them to be more desiring in their heart. Paul said, brethren, my heart's desire, prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Amen. Lord, let this people be that kind of people. And we pray, Lord, that you'll bless tonight in the invitation. We pray that someone will come and give their heart to Christ. We pray someone will come and maybe join this church. We'll pray that someone will come and maybe surrender their heart to missions. We pray maybe somebody that needs to be baptized will come forward and learn what obedience means. Pray, Lord, that maybe somebody has a burden on their heart for somebody. They'll come and lay it at the altar. And Lord, tell, tell you their needs. Lay it all at the altar, Lord, and you begin to work on that person. And I pray, Lord, whatever the need is today, we pray that you'll meet it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Amen. Preacher. As we stand. Will you come? Will you come? If God has spoken, lay the heart or a need on your heart, you ought to do. You don't do it. You're disobedient. Let's be faithful, loving. God has spoken. Will you say yes? Amen. Have a seat, if you will. Grab your billfold before you sit down. We're going to receive an offering tonight. A uh, love offering. Larry, I want you to stay right up here. Uh, right here where you're at. Okay. Uh, ushers, if you would, come. We will receive an offering tonight, a love offering uh, for these. You'll have another one of the ushers that can help us uh, here tonight. Uh, amen. Tonight, this, I don't want anyone given because you think you have to. I want us tonight to give because we get to. The Lord loveth a cheerful giver. And I'll tell you, he'll bless you for it. I've been blessed tonight. Let's do what God would have us to do. With heads bowed and eyes closed, Terry, take us to the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you will, does anyone have a question for Brother Larry now? Um, this, if you do, lift your hand. If not, we're not going to wait long. One right there. Julia. Anyone else? Xander?
come to res any reservation in the area, you see incompleteness. And, and, and that's the way it is, and that's the picture of who they are, too. And so, churches are refreshing to them because we see things different. Is it the government that isn't helping with these Well, it's the administration of the, probably the tribal council, because the government just gives them money to. They distribute, they use it, usually the council that uh, either doesn't know how to use it or they use it for things instead of the people. So they, they like to buy more land and maybe put cattle on it or horses or things like that instead of helping the people. So. Is there anyone else? One more question. Anyone? Shall we stand? Brother McKinney and his wife will be back there in the back. You can ask him any question you want on your way out. But we love you. Thank you for being here today. Be here Wednesday night. And uh, just let these know you will be praying for them. Keep all of our prayer requests. Especially those families that have been touched by death. Remember these, if you will. Our heads are bowed. Brother John, dismiss us in prayer.